Black Panther Wakanda Forever is a 2022 American superhero film based on the Marvel comic book's character, Black Panther. Produced by Marvel Studios and distributed by Walt Disney Studio Motion Pictures, it is the sequel to Black Panther in 2018 and the 30th film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Directed by Ryan Coogler, who co-wrote the screenplay with Joe Robert Cole, and the film stars an ensemble cast. In the film, the leaders of Wakanda fight to protect the nation in the wake of King T'Challa's death. Ideas for a sequel began after the release of Black Panther in February 2018. Coogler negotiated to return as director in the following months, and Marvel Studios officially confirmed the sequel's development in mid-2019. Plans of the film changed in August 2020, when Black Panther star Chadwick Boseman died from colon cancer. With Marvel choosing not to recast the role of T'Challa, the return of the other main cast members from the first film was confirmed that November, and the title was announced in May 2021. Production initially took place from late June to early November 2021 in Atlanta and Brunswick, Georgia, as well as around Massachusetts, before a hiatus to allow Wright to recover from an injury sustained during filming. Production resumed by mid-January 2022 and wrapped in late March in Puerto Rico. Black Panther Wakanda Forever premiered in the El Capitan Theatre and the Dolby Theatre in Hollywood, Los Angeles on October 26, 2022, and was released in the United States on November 11, 2022 as the final film of Phase 4 of the MCU. The film received praise from its critics for its action sequences, direction, performances, particularly those from Wright, Kurera, Herta, and Bassett, and a tribute to Bozeman, with some criticism for its story and runtime. The film received two nominations at the 80th Golden Globe Awards and six nominations at the 28th Critic Choice Awards, both of which nominated Bassett for her performance. Black Panther Wakanda Forever has grossed over $801 million worldwide, becoming the sixth highest grossing film of 2022. The cast includes Letitia Wright as Shuri or Black Panther, the princess of Wakanda who designs new technology for the nation. Wright was given a larger role in the film following the death of Chadwick Boseman, who starred in the previous MCU media as Shuri's older brother, T'Challa, Black Panther. Wright said Shuri turns to technology as a way to grieve T'Challa. Laputa Nyong as Nyaka, a former war dog and an undercover spy for Wakanda from the River Tribe. Nyongo said Nyaka has matured following both the blip and the death of T'Challa, explaining that her character's priorities have shifted and sharpened, while adding that Nyaka still remains the one who want to call when you're in trouble. Dane Gure as Okio, general of the Dora Melage, Wakanda's all-female special forces. Okonia later takes on the mantle of Midnight Angels along with Aneka, and is revealed in the film that Okio's husband, Wakabi, was imprisoned following the events of Black Panther in 2018. Guerrero said the film would explore many facets of Okio's humanity. Winston Jute is Mbaku, a powerful warrior and leader of Wakanda's mountain tribe, the Jabari. Duke indicated that following the Jabari's involvement in the events of Avengers Infinity War in 2018 and Avengers Endgame in 2019, the tribe is no longer isolated from the rest of Wakanda. He also felt Mbaku was trying to figure out a way to move forward in this new world for Wakanda, much like in many of the real world were trying to do in regards to the COVID-19 pandemic. Dominic Thorne as Riri Williams, an MIT student and genius inventor from Chicago who creates a suit of armor that rivals the one built by Tony Stark Iron Man. Director Ryan Coogler noted that Williams is a foil to Shuri, adding there's a thread of similarity between the two, but they are also very, very different, with Williams and Shuri's relationship presenting a similar exploration of diversity of the black experience, as T'Challa and Killmonger's relationship did in Black Panther. Tena Huerta Major as Nama the king of Tatalakon, an ancient civilization of underwater-dwelling people, who refer to him as the feathered serpent, Kukala Kunan. Wata said Namar decides to get involved in the surface world after T'Challa publicly reveals the truth of Wakanda at the end of the first film, which consequently puts Talakan in jeopardy, leading Namar and his people to take action to protect themselves. Herta also confirmed that the character is a mutant in the comics. Huerta called Namor an anti-hero, explaining that it was important to both him and Kugler to humanize the character by making his motivations understandable, despite him having an antagonistic role in the film. Kugler was enthused to include Namor's real unique features from the comics, including his ankle wings and pointy ears. He also described the character as a kind of an arsehole, kind of a romantic, and just incredibly powerful. Huerta learned Mayan language for the role, as well as how to swim. Martin Freeman is Everett K. Ross, an agent of the Central Intelligence Agency who has previous ties to Wakanda. Julia Louis Dreyfus is Valentina Allegra de Fontaine, the new director of the CIA and ex-wife of Ross. And Angela Bassett is Ramonda, the sovereign queen mother of Wakanda who is grieving the death of her son Chachala. Bassett explained that Ramonda would be trying to balance her leading the people, being a mother to Shuri and keeping threats to Wakanda at bay, all while grieving the death of Chachala, which is a lot for her to handle. While Bassett was initially unhappy with Ramonda being killed off in the film, Kugler reassured her that the death is not necessarily permanent in the MCU and that she felt it was possible for her character to return in the future, similar to how people were brought back to life following the blip in Endgame. 
Additionally, Michael B. Jordan reprises his role as Eric Killmonger Stevens, Chachala and Shuri's cousin. CNN news anchor Anderson Cooper appears as himself. Famous UFC fighter Kamara Usman appears as a naval officer. And comedian Trevor Noah also reprises his role as Shuri's AI, Griot. Unfortunately, Daniel Kaluuya could not reprise his role as Wahhabi as he had scheduling conflicts with the movie, Nope. With the untimely death of Chadwick Boseman on August 28, 2020 from colon cancer, Kugler stated that he had been unaware of Boseman's illness and had spent the last year prepping, imagining and writing words for him to say in the film that he was destined to see. Feige and other executives of Marvel Studios were also unaware of Boseman's illness. Boseman, who had become thinner from his illness in the weeks prior to his death, had been prepared to begin gaining the weight back in September 2020 ahead of filming for the sequel in March 2021. According to The Hollywood Reporter, industry observers felt Disney could recast the role, but that might generate a fan outcry and prompted comparisons between actors. Another suggestion was that for Disney to shift their plans and have Shuri take on the mantle of Black Panther, which occurred in the comic books. By the time of Boseman's death, Kugler was in the middle of writing the script and had already turned in a draft. In mid-November, executive producer Victoria Alonso said a digital double of Boseman would not be created for the film and added that Marvel was taking their time to work out what they were going to do next and how. Later in the month, Lupita Nyong'o and Winston Duke and Bass were confirmed for reprising their roles for the sequel. In December 2020, the film's release date was moved back to July 8, 2022. Feige also confirmed the role of T'Challa would not be recast and said the sequel would explore the world and the characters of the first film as a way to honour the legacy that Bozeman helped build. He would later reaffirm that the visual effects would not be used to include Bozeman in the film and also said it felt like it was too much too soon to recast, noting how the world outside and within the MCU was still processing the loss of Bozeman. Now I found this to be a touching, poignant and superbly well-made MCU movie and by far the best MCU movie of 2022. This film feels grounded in realism in many ways, even though of course it is complete fantasy, but it's because the film now obviously touches on the loss of Chadwick Boseman, the man of course who played the titular character in the previous incarnations. What Ryan Coogler has done here though, has not made a film that is smaltzy or lingers too much on Chadwick, but rather pays tribute to him in the most perfect way. The film starts off with his death off screen, and how the characters around him now have to deal with the loss. Then in the usual Marvel intro, it rather plays a little homage to Chadwick Boseman. No usual Marvel music is played, and it almost seems like a moment of silence as we just remember Chadwick for that short time. It's a fitting, sad and poignant tribute to the great actor. And I feel another touch of genius here is that rather than recasting him, they've decided to move the story along, and that Shuri now becomes the center focus, and eventually of course Black Panther herself. The film is deep, it's serious, and it's reflective, and it's by far the most mature Marvel release in quite some time. The cast are absolutely excellent here, but I must be give a particular shout out here to Letitia Wright as Shuri and Angela Bassett as Queen Ramonda. I feel their particular performances just stand out for me as really emotionally layered. I absolutely love the antagonist in this film here, Neymar, played superbly by Tena Huerta Maya. He's a complex antagonist here, and you almost see his side of the story as he protects his culture, which of course has been destroyed in previous years by the Spanish conquistadors. I love the tie-in into the ancient Mayan culture here, intertwined of course with the idea of Atlantis. This is far better portrayal of an underwater civilization than for example Aquaman did. Neymar is a complete anti-hero. On one side you see why he needs to protect his civilization and his people, on the other side though he is ruthless, cold and vicious. As I say with all these movies, it's always so important to have a fantastic antagonist, and Neymar really fits this bill perfectly. The story is evolved, it's deep, it's moving, and it's just very well made. Some people criticise the running length, but I thought it fitted the movie perfectly, as you didn't want to rush through these layered, complex characters. My only one downside maybe is the character of Riri Williams here by Dominic Thorne. I just felt she added nothing to the film overall. In saying that though, Ryan Coogler has delivered another fantastic, layered and complex movie within the Black Panther series, and it surely will go down as one of the more stronger and deeper titles within the whole MCU universe. Yes, you do miss Chadwick Boseman as Black Panther in the movie, as he was so good in the role, but in the same breath though, the film makers have adapted perfectly and found a way to make an excellent moving movie without him in it. The CGI, as always, is absolutely excellent, and the film would leave you on the edge of your seat with some phenomenal fight sequences. But overall, what it really does, though, is gives you a fantastic multi-layered, deep story with a beautiful, sad ending at the end. 
as it pays respect to the fine actor that Chadwick Boseman was in his most iconic of roles, as of course T'Challa, Black Panther. I also love now the conflicted Shuri in this role. She is now not the perfect hero and will pick up the mantelpiece automatically and just does right. She is angry, vengeful and conflicted. And Letitia Wright brings this to the surface absolutely perfectly. For me this is a mature MCU film, much more deeper than some of the latest releases. And once again it asks questions, firstly of culture, of past atrocities, of the current state of the world, all while intertwined in a fantastic fantasy driven action blockbuster. Well written, perfectly acted, beautifully made, with a touch of respect for a fine actor that was lost too soon. Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, gets a 9 out of 10.